When calculating your p-value, you need to know if you're doing a left, right, or two-tailed test. So as a quick reminder, a left-tailed test just means that the p-value is probably getting a value that's smaller or to the left of your test statistic. A right-tailed test means the p-value is probably getting a value that's to the right or larger than your test statistic. And then we have two-tailed tests. For a two-tailed test, the p-value is probably being farther off-center in either direction than your test statistic is. And so here, after, after you've determined that you're doing a two-tailed test, if your test statistic's in the left tail, find the area to the left, just like it was a left tail test, double that to account for the unseen or equally valid right tail. Right. Again, I can't stress this enough. Once you have already decided it's a two tail test, if the test statistics in the right tail, then you find the area to the right and you double that. So we have left tail tests, right tail tests, two tail tests. We have tests that are based on Z scores, some are based on T scores, and some are based on chi squared scores. And when it comes right down to it, literally every combination is possible. You can do left, right, and two tailed test using any of these distributions. So, for our first example, let's imagine we're doing a left tail test, we have a z score of 1.8. So by definition, the p-value is probably getting a z-score that's smaller or to the left of 1.8. So draw a z-graph, the p-value is the area to the left. We're going to use our normal CDF from negative infinity up to that point of 1.8. Again, because we're already standardized, we're dealing with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1 inside the normal CDF function. And there it is. The p-value is 0.9641. Using the same z-score, if we're doing a right-tailed test, then by definition, the p-values are probably being bigger than the 1.8. So we need to find the area to the right of the 1.8. And to find that area, we're going to do our normal CDF from 1.8 to infinity, mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. And we end up with a z-score of 0 0.0359. Right-tailed test, p-values area to the right of your test statistic in the story. So what if we were doing a two-tailed test and we had this z-score? Well, then this z-score is in the right tail. So the area to the right of 1.8 will represent one of the two tails. That'll be half my p-value. So we're going to find the area to the right and double it. Now, since we already found the area to the right of 0359, for a two-tailed test with this z-score of 1.8, your p-value would be 0.0718. It's a two-tailed test. Your test statistic's in the right tail. Treat it like a right-tailed test. You get the 0359. Double that for the unseen but just as good left tail, and you have yourself a two-tailed test. So what if we have a negative z-score, like negative 2.3, and a left-tailed test? Definition, p-value is the probability of getting a z-score that's smaller than negative 2.3. That's what it means to be a left tail test. We need to find the area to the left of negative 2.3. That will be my p-value. We're going to do that with the normal CDF. And so your p-value here would be about 0.0107. Right tail test, same z-score. Probability of being bigger than that z-score is what we mean by the p-value. We need to find the area to the right of that z-score. We're going to use our normal CDF. And we end up with 9893. Doesn't matter if it's a z-t or chi-squared score. Right tail means it's the area to the right wherever your test statistic is. So find that area. So finally, a two-tailed z-test, when we have a negative z-score, that negative z-score is going to be in the left tail. So we're going to find the area in the left tail. That will represent half our p-value. We multiply that by 2. 
and we get our p-value. So normal CDF, this is the function we're using to find that probability. And then we double the 0107. We get 0214 is our p-value. And so let's look at left-tailed test statistic. That's a t-score. Okay. So again, left-tailed means we want the probability of getting a t-score that's less than that number. We want the area to the left of 2.1. We're going to use our TCDF, plug in our 16 degrees of freedom, and our p-value would be 0 0.9740 if we were doing a left-tailed test with that t-score. If we were doing a right-tailed test with the same t-score, again, the p-value is the area to the right of the test statistic. So we need to find that area to the right of 2.1. We'll use the TCDF from there to infinity, 16 degrees of freedom, and we get a 0260. For the two-tailed test with the same test statistic, again, we got to look at the graph. Our test statistics in the right tail. So the p-value will be two times the area to the right of our test statistic. So we're going to take, find our area to the right, which we already did, multiply it by two. And for a two-tailed test with this test statistic that has 16 degrees of freedom and a t distribution, the p-value would be 0 0.0520. If I'm going to do a left-tailed test with this test statistic, then by definition, the p-value is the area to the left of negative 1.9. So we draw the curve, p-value is the area to the left. We use our TCDF from negative infinity up to that number. That is our p-value, 0.0319. If I'm doing a right-tailed test with this same test statistic, we want the area to the right of the test statistic, so we're going to shade in the right side of the graph. And that p-value is going to be a large number, as we can see from the graph. We're going to do our TCDF, and we end up with something about 0.9681. And finally, for this test statistic, a two-tailed test. So negative 1.9 is in the left tail, so we're going to find the probability to the left and double that. So. The area to the left of negative 1.9 is half of our p-value. It represents the left tail out of the two tails. So we do our TCDF, get our 0.0319 that we previously got in this example, multiply that by 2 because we'd be just as convinced if we were on the other end of the world. So 0.0638 turns out to be my p-value. Now let's look at a couple chi-squared test statistics. So let's say I'm doing a left-tailed test. I have a chi-squared score with 17 degrees of freedom. And the score, the test statistic is 4.7. So p-value is the area to the left or probability being smaller than 4.7. We need to know that with 17 degrees of freedom, our mean will be 17. So 4.7 is going to be over there on the far left side of the graph. The area to the left of 4.7 is the p-value, that's what we mean by a left tail test. And we're going to use our chi-squared CDF from 0 to that 4.7 with 17 degrees of freedom. To determine our p-value here is 0 0.0015. If we were to do a right tail test with the same test statistic, the p-value will be probably even bigger than that number. So we want everything to the right of the 4.7. And so we do chi-squared CDF from 4.7 to infinity. And we end up with our p-value of 0.9985. Same test statistic, two-tailed test. So we've already seen that this test statistic is in the left tail. So we're going to find the area to the left, as if it was a left tail test. Double that. So the area to the left of the 4.7 is half of the p-value. So... We found that area to the left being 0 0.0015 already. Multiply that by 2, you get approximately 0 0.0030 for your p-value. Now, what if our chi-squared score was a big chi-squared score? So here we're going to do the test statistic of 29.4. We have 17 degrees of freedom. 
Left tailed test means the p-value is the area to the left of our test statistic. We want to graph it. Again, mean of 17 because we have 17 degrees of freedom. So 29.4 is way out in the right tail. P-value is the area to the left of 29.4. So 0 to 29.4 with 17 degrees of freedom in our chi-squared CDF function. And we get our p-value of roughly 9690. Now, that's for the left tail test. Same test statistic, right tail, area to the right, probability being bigger than 29.4. So we have our p-values over here to the right of 29.4. So we're gonna go chi-squared CDF from there to infinity, and we end up with a probability of 0 0.0310. So finally, So doing a two-tailed test, we've already seen 29.4 is in the right tail. So we're going to treat this like a right-tailed test. Find the area to the right of 29.4 and double it. Chi-squared graph. Area in the right tail is half the p-value. It's one of our two tails. Use the chi-squared CDF from 29.4 to infinity with 17 degrees of freedom. We're going to double that. And we end up with our p-value of 0.0620. So as a reminder, Left tailed tests, the p-value is probably getting a value that's less than your test statistic. Just find the area to the left using whichever tool is appropriate, depending on whether or not you're dealing with ZT or chi-squared scores. Right tailed test, the p-value is the area to the right of your test statistic. Use the appropriate tool. And finally, two tailed tests. So remember the p-value is probably being farther out in either direction. So, after you've decided it's a two-tailed test, if your test statistic's in the left tail, just find the area to the left as if you're doing a left tail test, double that number and you have your p-value. If your test statistic's on the right side, find the area to the right as if you were doing the right tail test, double that and you have your p-value for your two-tailed test. If you have any questions about the topics covered in this video or anything else that's happening in your statistical reasoning class, talk to your instructor, go to their office hours, or take advantage of the free tutoring available in the Math Tutorial Center. Good luck and go Vols!